My name is Paula Leopold and thank you for joining me in my studio. On this instructional step-by-step -step DVD, I'll be teaching you how to pencil these beautiful peonies along with the coral roses in the background. I will also teach you how to complete a background so that you no longer have your paper showing but it's a very rich full look of a summer garden. If you have any questions as you go along, don't hesitate to contact me by email and I'll get back with you as quickly as I can. And then from time to time, I hope you check our website for new instructional DVDs and pattern packages. Here's the original photograph of the peony flower in the garden with those beautiful coral roses around it. Now I have very lightly penciled this first petal in just so you can see where I'll begin. It's up at the top right next to that coral rose. I'm using a very light touch with long linear strokes just in a back and forth motion. Now some pigment colors are much more intense than others and you'll find that sometimes you'll need to adjust your pressure with heavier or, or lighter but because this is so intense it won't require much of a pressure to completely cover the petal and it's good for you to know in my pencil technique you'll always layer it very lightly which will enable you to get a very good rich appearance so you'll still be able to see the paper through your penciling for the first few colors that we place on your paper I'll add a little bit of shadowing right down at the bottom using just a touch of lilac and you won't need a very heavy pressure, just very lightly cover that at this point. Notice right on the edge of this lilac as it moves into the hot pink color by simply adjusting my pressure using these small circular little strokes, I'll be able to fade that and make a nice transition of value. Adjusting your pressure is the best way of learning to get well blended lines between areas. In this next area, I'm going to add a value darker with my mulberry. Especially in the little V formations, we know that those are typically the darkest area. So let's go ahead and lay that in. I'll use a series of linear strokes and then some smaller little circular strokes. The mulberry is a pretty intense color, so it won't take very much pressure to get it to release on top of what we've previously penciled. But notice how using these small little circular strokes, I can actually get that to blend and make a nice transition fading my color up into that hot pink area. And one of the most successful ways of blending pencils is learning how to adjust your pressure. I'll remind you just constantly of the importance of using a soft blending technique with a very light pressure with those circular strokes to give a nice transition from one color to another. But if that doesn't work, feel free to go back into a previous color. Here example, I'm using that hot pink, which is the first color we laid down. And so it's just fine also to go back and forth from color to color. I also know that I do still want much heavier coverage of this petal, so I have plenty of room to make adjustments. Let's go over into this other little V corner and start with a heavier pressure and then those small circular little strokes to blend. I'll use my Parma Violet to deepen in that little V-shaped corner. It has a touch more blue than the mulberries, so it will nicely cool that area and make it recede. And once again, I'll use those tiny little strokes as I'm blending it into the mulberry. Down here in these little V formations, I'll use a cooler, darker value. So let's use just a touch of violet in these couple of areas. 
Now here's a great example of where I go back and forth from pencil to pencil. These are all colors I've already laid down in this area. Example, the mulberry, the hot pink, to further give it a completed filled in appearance, but also to help soften lines. One of the beautiful characteristics of colored pencils is that they are transparent. And so you can get intermediate values and shades just by layering pencil upon pencil. I'm using the lilac more as a burnishing tool to bind color to color and then to fill in the pores of the paper a little more thoroughly. It isn't changing the colors I've laid down. It's a very neutral, weak color on top of this darker area. And look how soft that's beginning to appear using this very soft pressure with the small little circular strokes. Along the edge, I'll add some additional Parma Violet to help it curl back. You can use some short little linear strokes, but then you'll want to come back and use those small circular strokes to blend it. You don't want it to appear outlined, so just some small little soft strokes to help fade it away from that edge. I'll warm one of the little sections of that lilac with a little bit of process red. Now it doesn't have to be the whole length necessarily, but a section of it would be very pretty to give it some variation. If you don't have that blended well, go back into a little bit of hot pink and take those small circular motions with a very light pressure until you get a nice blended look. You can even go back into some lilac and I'm actually penciling right on top of the Parma and the Process Red to make it a more soft, muted look. Using my Process Red, I'm going to add a little deeper pigment and warm it up on this upper edge right along here. I'll start with some smaller linear strokes and then come back and blend it in towards the petal. I'm really using just the very side of my pencil lead as I'm blending as opposed to the point. Sometimes I do use the point if I want a firmer edge or a heavier pressure, but when I know that I'm trying to create a very soft blended appearance, to use it on the side is much more efficient. I'll add some additional violet and pull some streaks now, up. I don't want to leave those lines ending abruptly, so I will slightly soften them down as they come in towards the pink areas. I'll use my process red to create the resemblance of a center vein. We can begin by just adding just a little bit of shadow right next to the petal that will be on top of it, soft blend it, and then just gently pull it up towards the top of that petal. Now, I'll come along the opposite side of that petal that's laying on top of the one we're working on currently, add additional process red, soften it in, and this is once again the reason why you don't want to build up too heavily too quickly. So you give yourselves the flexibility of adding additional color where you might desire it. This petal has a very beautiful little split at the top. So using our mulberry, I'll first of all go ahead and put the little V shape formation where it does split, then we can come back and outline around the tips of the petal and continue soft blending it. Keep good sharp points on those pencils and if you need to create just a little firmer line, do go up on the tip as opposed to the side of that pencil. You can always come back with another color and just lightly soft blend that into the petal. Here I'm using just a touch of lilac to do that. I'm going to use just a touch of white right in this highlight area. It will help retain the brightness there. It'll also help to blend that little area and make it look very rolled. We'll do the same in this upper area as we've done in the lower areas and that's going back and forth from color to color. So using a little bit of the process red I'll add some additional darker pink, pulling with a real gentle pressure, some linear strokes. 
I start out heavier and as I come in towards the pedal I pick up on my pressure so it gives a nice blended gradation of value. I'm going to add some pink which is just a little warmer look right in here as I blend in towards that lighter area using those small little circular strokes on the side of my pencil edge. Just with a whisper of a touch I'll use a little bit of my Parma Violet. Now you can come back on top of that with some lilac and then if it gets just a touch too cool you can always come back on top of that with additional pink to warm it. It still has the presence of a cooler leaf but not too cool or flat looking because it doesn't have good warmth which helps to round a petal. I'll add some additional white as a highlight. Remember one of the beautiful characteristics of Prismacolor colored pencils is that they are transparent and so what you pencil below will show through. I'll increase the speed in this little section so you can see how I've completed the petal without going through the slower motion. But here again, you can see completely the step-by-step -step how I've completed it, and then you can pause and repeat the steps also. Going back from exactly the same colors, the white, the pink, possibly some Parma or Lilac, use what you need individually to create the likeness to my petal. And at this time I am increasing the pressure so that I can really push color to color which is called burnishing and also push the color into the pigment of the paper which is a burnishing technique. Now despite many people's understanding burnishing does not necessarily blend hard lines so keep that in mind. We want to always create a soft blended look as we go as opposed to coming back and trying to undo hard lines in the final stages. We'll move on to an upper petal. These are lighter. I do see that there's just a little bit of a bend in that petal creating a little more cool look. So we're going to gray it down just slightly and I'll use that gray lavender. I'll go ahead and just fill this area in above that little curved line where I can see the fold or the bend in the petal. It, I'll glaze over it with a little bit of hot pink and once again in painting we would have mixed that value together we would have simply grayed that pink down in color pencil you will layer color upon color to get the value that you're desiring using just a little bit of mulberry I'll deepen in the V formation right down here and you can also add just a touch around the petal that's on top to create just a slight bit of a shadow look. You don't want it too heavy. I'll blend as I go in those small little circular motions. And if you don't have a good enough blend, just come back with some heavier coverage of your hot pink. I'm going to add just a touch of white on this upper corner where I can definitely see the light catching it. Then I'll come back down into the lower corner, add the mulberry, blend it if you need to with additional hot pink. Now just as in painting, every little area is relative to what you've previously done. I see that I need to come back with a little bit of mulberry on my back petal just to slightly give a little shadow appearance. I'll come back and soften that with a little bit of pink. Holding true to the theory of color is relative to color, I also see that I need to come back in this little V formation and darken one degree. I'm going to use my Delia purple. It is a warm purple, but it will allow the violet color to show through that we placed in earlier, but still give it a darker value. But if it becomes too warm, feel free to come back in and put some additional violet in that lower area to cool it back down. 
I'll do one of the upper petals. This is a pretty large one. I'll begin with my hot pink and outlining first of all around the petal that lays on top of it. Then I'll pull up with a very light pressure so I get a nice blending as I go, almost a whisper of a pressure as I pull upward. Our dark value will be our mulberry and so I'll begin adding just a few additional shadow areas with that mulberry. I'll use both long and short strokes as I pull this through but picking up on my pressure to give it a blended appearance. I'll add a little bit of lilac where I see just a touch of a shadow right before it's rolling up into the very bulbed highlighted area. I'll use just a touch of Parma Violet and cool a couple of these areas. Use those real small little circular strokes so you're blending as you go. Some of these petals had a really blushy appearance, a more of a peachy look, and your blush pink will add a very nice touch. If you really love this here, go back to some of the original larger petals and add a little bit of that on those. In fact, let's do go together on that petal just right above and add a little bit of that blush pink. Oh, how pretty that is. It really warms that nicely and warm colors help to give curvature. And then back into a little Parma violet and I don't mind those streaks once again. Now, I don't know if I've talked to you thus far about the importance of turning your board constantly so that you're getting the appropriate amount of pressure. It is more comfortable in certain directions for you to pull than in others, and so give yourselves um, the workspace that you can constantly be turning that board so it's most comfortable to pull those strokes. Let's add some white to keep the nice highlighted area. So back and forth we go until we have the petal completed. So always start lightly. It's easy to build up and to fill in but it's much more difficult to try to take it out. Not that you can't take your eraser if you need to and erase a complete area out, but start slowly. I wanna start with a few greens at this point, and one reason I want to do that, I want to compare the darkness and the values and see if I have enough of the deeper tones within the flower petals themselves. So using my dark green, but in a very soft touch, I'll go ahead and place that in on the leaf. Most of my strokes are going to be longer linear strokes, and this isn't nearly as dark as I'll be able to make it later by using a heavier pressure. Once again, I'm going to be careful not to create hard edges, but softer edges as I go and pull in towards the leaf and you can use some short little pulling strokes to do that as you soften inward. I will retain my highlighted areas. And then once you've placed it in all of the areas that you want to, then you can come back and just slightly darken it. But once again, it's not going to be darkened to its fullest strength. So a little heavier pressure, but not a hard pressure by any means. And then once I have established a basic shape, I'll come back and darken slightly. These short little pulling strokes help you to adjust the pressure, thus helping you to get a soft gradation of values, getting it prepared to put those highlight colors in without the hard lines. Through the highlighted areas, I'm going to lightly cover it with my apple green, starting with a softer pressure and building up with my pressure once I have it laid in. And notice how that's blending nicely into the dark green on the edges. I always like to establish the darks and the lights, then I'll come back and more thoroughly fill in the pores of the paper with heavier pressure. Using some spring green, I'll glaze on top of the apple green that we just put in, and that will make it one degree brighter, but not too garish. 
I'll come back with my dark green and now with a heavier pressure start deepening some of those areas. I'll begin down in this little V formation where I know it needs to be the very darkest. Then you can also go up along the side of the vein. Be neat as you're doing this, so take your time. A few of those small little strokes will be quite effective in filling that in. Adjust your pressure though, so as you're coming out towards the lighter areas, you're getting a good blend. So now I'm using a very soft pressure as I'm close to that spring green area. But once you go back to the deepest area, adjust your pressure again and go to a heavier pressure. Here's something I'd like you to see. I put a clean piece of paper or a paper towel underneath my hand so as I am working in more detail on this leaf, I don't want to disturb the pink colors or get them smudged or dirty. So just set something underneath your hand to keep some of those areas a little nicer and more preserved. Let's brighten this little vein area with a touch of chartreuse. That will help it roll very nicely. Now I want to further establish a little bit of dark along that vein line. So back to my dark green and I'll gently just pull out away from that vein. One thing I'll call your attention to is I never pull that vein line all the way through the tip. I break it before it comes, otherwise it looks a little stiff, um, almost plastic looking as opposed to a nice soft painted appearance. Right here I'm using a little bit of grass green to make a transition from that darker area into the lighter and this will help it to blend and fade very effectively. You may want to brighten this little highlighted area with a little additional chartreuse. Using just a touch of cream, I'm going to do a couple things with this. I'm going to take the bite out of that chartreuse, but it will also help to brighten that highlight. And then the other thing it's going to do is start helping to bind color to color. It'll do uh, a little burnishing at the same time to fine tune that area. If that gets too whitish, just glaze back over that with a little bit of your light green. Then pick up something else a little lighter or a little darker until you get a very fine tuned leaf. Now at this point when we're done, everything will be burnished. It will be bound together because we're using a very heavy pressure. We're binding it to the paper so we won't see any little pores of the paper. We'll have a beautiful, completely filled in leaf that's very well blended with good contrast of highlights and shadows. And I wanted you to see that I am going to add a little bit of that light green also on this opposite side to slightly tone that yellow chartreuse that is so vibrant. We want the undertones of that nice bright yellow, but here again, not so it's too garish. Tints are very important in leaves in a painting so that you're tying items together. This is a little bit of the mulberry that I've used on the petal of the peony and I'll lightly put it on the darker portion of this leaf, just fading it in as I go. Now one place where I never put a tint is in the brightest highlighted areas although you do want those tints to have value change. So I'm going to come back into just a little bit of process red and as I come up to the lighter tip of that leaf, I'll soften that in. It'll also give me a better blended appearance so it doesn't stop so abruptly as it comes into the other green areas. But even down in this little V shape, just because it's a cool area, doesn't mean we don't want to make it alive with a little bit of warmth. So let's use a little mulberry down in this very deep dead area of the leaf. I'll give you a demonstration on the background. What you'll need to begin with is some odorless paint thinner and I like the Mona Lisa brand that you can get in a craft or an art store. 
You'll also need a variety of different sizes of flat brushes. Along with your colored pencils, you'll also need some bar pencils if you'd like. You can buy those next to the colored pencils. You can buy them in individual colors. They don't come in as wide of a variety, but you can get several of your values that you need. When beginning in this light section on the right hand upper side, we want to start with our very lightest values. So you can use chartreuse or even some yellow chartreuse to blend with. And don't be concerned about the blur. We'll now begin the process with a solvent. And using my flat brush, I'll drop big droplets onto the paper. Now this doesn't distort the paper in any way. It doesn't harm it. So use plenty of it and just keep softening with big circular strokes. Then you can come back with more pencil color and the wet solvent actually helps to give this a softer blended appearance. Let me show you how to do one of the darker corners down in the bottom right. I'll use my bar to begin with with some dark green with a very heavy pressure going back and forth in all different directions. So I've laid in some of my darker colors. You can use your mulberry, some Delia purple, black cherry, any of those tones would be very beautiful down here. Part of the beauty of the fullness of this background is making it look complete like there's little portions of peonies or roses that are not our focal point but they're still in our background. And with the bars you can get a little heavier pressure, a little more thoroughly filled in, but you can still do it completely with the pencils only. Put a few lighter values in, a little bit of mulberry or the process red to soften some of these colors together. Also work in some of the lighter pink tones, some pale vermilion, hot pink, process red, any of those will help it to pull together with the other subject matters in the painting. Make a transition into your lighter greens as you go up and any variety will be great. And once you have a great coverage, go ahead and go into your solvent with plenty of solvent on the brush. I'm going to just drop it, swirl it into my pencil colors. So back and forth from solvent to pencil. If you see it's not softening in and you still see too much paper showing through, then you know the problem is not enough pigment from the colored pencil. So go back and forth. Remember, it's just fine to do it wet on wet. In fact, it's very helpful to do that as it helps the color from the pencil to release into the wet solvent. And with great patience and diligence, completely cover every little aspect and opening of the background of the white paper. You'll eventually get a very gorgeous, completed background. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope you visit our website for future projects.